so good morning everybody. Um, first of all, thank you very much for having us here today. Um, we thought it would be a great opportunity for us to uh, introduce ourselves to you guys today and uh, before we kick off this project and hopefully meet some of you. Um, the other thing I just want to say, uh, I always feel a little bit awkward in these type of situations because we are speaking in English and you are all obviously Finnish. Um, so we very much appreciate you uh, bearing with us. Um, we've been trying for many years to learn the Finnish language, but it's just too difficult, too difficult. Um, so here today with us, we have the three of us from Sofco, as Katie said. So Robert Hickey, who is our project director. Uh, he has been with the company how long, Robert? 25 years. Over 25 years now. So he's, he knows everything there is to know about projects and product and has actually been involved with some of you guys already in a, in a, in a previous life. Um, so Robert will be working very closely with, with uh, Katie on this project. Harry Salmela, uh, again, some of you may know Harry. Uh, Harry heads our software development team, so all of our software development done here in Finland, um, which we deliver globally with Threads Ofco, and then myself, obviously, Anton. So what do we want to do today? Um, High-level introductions to start. Um, we are just starting this project. We are meeting with Patty and the rest of the Palcat team immediately after this meeting to start the project workshops and start this whole process. Um, I was just talking to Taro and Katty earlier, and it's great to finally uh, get working on this project. We feels like we've been working on it for two, three years now to try and get to this point. Um, so we're delighted to get started. So we will just give you a high-level introduction. Some of you maybe know uh, a little bit about Sofco, maybe not. So we'll just give you some. I'll give you some background detail on Sofco. Um, Robert is then going to walk through a demo so that you can then just get a, an initial view of what the product looks like, what it does. We obviously will be spending a lot of time to, uh, to, to work on, on what we're going to be implementing as part of this project. So we have a very long list, um, which Katy has gathered from all of, all of you guys, so uh, we have lots of work to do on that. Um, and then finally, we just wanted to, again, give you uh, an introduction to how we will approach this project, what our... Um, how we will work together, uh, what our kind of approach is, our methodology, and what our goals are for the project. So first of all, a little bit about Sofco. So we've been in business for over 27 years now, so we have a, a lot of experience in history in this space. Um, we have our head offices in Dublin in Ireland. Um, we have regional offices in, in the UK and the US as well, which are mainly local implementation and, and uh, sales and support centers, so Boston in the US, Manchester in the UK, and we also do all our global R&D development here in Finland. Um, offices, so Harry's team uh, is located in Havinka, so all our software development is done uh, out of Havinka. Um, we also have some um, technical expertise up in uh, Uveskula. Uh, I pronounce those correctly, I hope. Um, and then we have an office uh, which we've recently opened here in downtown Helsinki, which is, I'm not sure which direction, but very close to here, um, where we will be delivering all of our um, consulting services, regional help desk, and all those type of uh, resources. Um, in terms of our product, so we have a very long history of our product. Uh, on the right-hand side there is uh, 10, so that's our latest version of our project, of our product, Sofco 10. Um, but we have a very, very long history in, in developing that product suite. So again, some of you will recognize uh, some, of the, some of the branding over the years. So back in the 1990s, we started out with PC Doc, which some of you may recognize. Um, versions R7. We've uh, worked very, very closely with Microsoft over the years. We're a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner. We're certified with SAP, which I know is important for this project. Um, in 2008-2010, we released uh, R8 version of our product and StoreLife, which is the archive component um, of our platform. Um, in 2010, we were one of the early adopters of the whole SaaS platform, which is again a key part of this project. And we developed a, a long relationship with Amazon, who are the global leaders in this space from, uh, from a hosting and, and cloud services perspective. So we are an advanced technology partner of Amazon's. Um, in 2003, 2013, um, we opened our offices in Finland with Harry's team in, in Havinka, and then last year we released our Sofco 10 product. 
So the Software 10 product is, is, a, is a, a single platform for, all, for, the, for the automation of all financial processes. So um, we have a number of different solutions that we deliver on that platform. So um, from procurement, automation, um, on the AR side, e-invoicing, and also archive, or ECM as we call it. And we've delivered this solution to over a million customers globally. Uh, business users globally, so we have, and we work in just about, uh, you know, P2P and AP and procurement is, is, a, is a horizontal type product, so we've worked in just about every industry. Um, so, you know, typical industries like retail, we have um, big customers in um, Primark, and Azad, and Wang, um, uh, manufacturing, um, distribution, so companies like Sunny Delight in, uh, in Cincinnati in the U.S., um, but we also work in heavily regulated industries, so we have a lot of customers in um, industries like financial services, so customers like Lloyds Bank, BNY Mellon, Pioneer Investments, <coughs> Santa Fitzgerald, all operate in a very um, strictly regulated industry, and, and uh, those are kind of key factors in the solutions that we deliver. Other regulated industries like healthcare, um, here in Europe and also in the US, um, very different industries uh, in each different location, but also heavily regulated type industries. Um, and then our philosophy, just generally, um, we'll talk a little bit more later about how we go about uh, implementing projects and how we plan to implement this project, but our philosophy generally is all about building long-term relationships and partnerships with our customers. Um, so that, that'll be a key cornerstone to this project. And you'll, you'll hear us a lot talking about a single project team, not the Sofco team and the Finnish government team or the Palkett team, but working together as a single team. Um, so collaboration is very important for us from the start of projects, but also um, after the projects. You know, we, a lot of the feedback that goes into Harry's team in terms of what goes into the product roadmap comes from our customers. So it's very important for us that we build and maintain that relationship with customers. So for Finnish government, for this project, um, we are focused uh, on three core parts of our solution, so procurement, uh, AP automation, and archive, or ECM. So those are the, the key parts of the key requirements for this particular project. Um, and I don't, I don't want to go through this slide in detail because there's an awful lot on it, but the key message behind this slide is that it's a single platform that uh, encompasses everything from procurement all the way through to payment um, and processing and the invoices, and all built on a single platform, includes workflow, includes archive. So when we looked at the requirements that were outlined in this um, project, there was all the traditional procurement pieces, there was all the traditional invoice processing pieces, and then there was other things that we needed. We needed archive, we needed memo vouchers, we needed other types of workflows. And we, are, we think we are one of the unique solutions that allow us to do all of that truly within one platform, which then gives, uh, delivers one of the key goals for this project, which is total visibility end-to-end, -end, which I know is one of the key initiatives for, for this initiative. Um, Robert's going to show you a little bit more about this in the demo, so I don't want to steal his thunder, as they say, but um, just some of the, uh, I guess, key um, approaches that we've taken in delivering our products. So it's all about central visibility. We want to have all the information end-to-end -end in one system, which we can then present in a usable fashion to key people, key managers within the business. So you will see a lot about um, dashboards and central visibility within the solution. We've also um, worked a lot on the user interface and the experience for people who are using the system uh, and have followed a, a, an Amazon-style user experience. So again, people, it's very familiar to people. Um, you know, they're, they're used to dealing with these type of interfaces in all the other applications that they use in their daily life. So why should our business applications look any different? So that's very important to us. And then finally, all the kind of latest technologies. So, um, you know, people live in email, people live on mobile. So, again, why should we not be able to deliver our solutions in those type of uh, interfaces? So, um, those are our high level things. Um, I'll come back in a minute uh, once Robert's done his demonstration and talk to you about our approach for this project and how we plan to, to implement. But I'll hand over to Robert now to, to walk through the demo. Just those out there. 
Um, okay. Good morning. This is a live demo, which sometimes can be dangerous, <laughs> but it's it's real. Um, I'm going to show you that this is our what we would consider our standard demonstration. This isn't how we envisage putting it in for your organization. This is just a standard to give you a flavor of what the screens look like. So how you log in, the kind of look and feel, the type of skills. I'll show you also uh, a real, if I don't drop it and break it, uh, really using the mobile, how to approve via email, just to give you a flavor of how it is. As Anton said, we're going to start as early as this afternoon with the different workshops to start configuring and talking about exactly how it's needed for each of the organizations. There's a small list of 2,400 requirements from yourselves, so that's everybody's feedback. So we're going to be going through that saying, okay, that's standard, that's standard, we need to configure this. But I know Kathy and everybody has said there's a lot of interest to see what the new solution looks like because some of you haven't seen it at all. Uh, so that's what we're trying to go through here. Okay. So it's all browser-based. So you can connect on to a browser from your desktop via your mobile phone. And then as Anton said, you can do approval and rejections via email. So just normally on your email, either opening up on your desktop or on your phone, you'll see there's a button, it's very straightforward, there's a green button to approve and a red button to reject. Now if you need to see more detail, of course, you can log into the application, but for a lot of time people say, yeah, yeah, I know about that, click, it's approved. And everything then works in the background. So if I, I'm going to log in as different users here, so you can see the type of uh, look and feel on it. So the first person going to log in here is as the financial controller. Now here we call this our dashboard view. So the dashboard allows us to configure any number of reports. And these can be graphical reports like you see here. They can be simple lists. They could be work queues. You can also look at bottlenecks. Okay, show me where uh, requisitions are stuck. Is it stuck with my finance team or is it stuck with the approvers? Look at spend uh, related to different suppliers or spend across a department or a cost center or a GL. So all of these are different dashboard views that you can present uh, either on screen or even on a, a TV uh, on a wall. So different dashboards will allow you to view different things. So here we have what we call our finance dashboard, and I've just got a bunch of them active here. As you can see from the screen in a second, you can have different modes and different screens. So some can be a pie chart, a bar chart, and different result sets. As I go down through the different ones, you can see you can have multiple charts. Like This is all the same. This is all looking at the purchase order data or the requisition data, receiving information, invoicing information. And it's merely a choice of how you want that to be presented to the users. Okay? Because sometimes it's very, if you're working, it's easy to work down through a list. But if you want to have an overview and say, well, look, show me per department or per organization or per, per vendor what my spend is, or how much we're doing. Different views can lock down through here. These are just flavors of it. And the idea will be that these are the out of the box, and then as we go through the different workshops, we'll say, okay, these are the standard five, six, seven different dashboard views, and you can also choose which users should be able to access these dashboards. So you can say, well, people in this department should see things about procurement. People in that department should see things about invoicing. So based on your login, you can either have access to some or not. Different accruals will show you know, a list view, so based on the different organizations. Here we've set up the system with four different uh, organizations, so one based in Finland, one based in Ireland, one based in the UK, and one based in the US. And all the exchange rates and everything are all working in the background. Here we've got different budget dashboards, and equally I can uh, connect into one of these and drill through. So if I said I'm interested in the Virgin Media, go in, click, and I can see all of the invoices or documents sitting in behind it. Click through, and then I can see a display of the invoice. Now again, this is general demo data, so you get the idea. It's just sample invoices. But the idea is, as Anton said, it's from a complete view. So say, yes, that's an interesting chart. Now I'm specifically interested in that vendor or that status or why I have these ones being rejected. And you can click all the way through to see the detail. So I'm going to log in as Timo. 
no offense, it just happens to be the Finnish name we had picked. <laughs> Um, now one of the things we have the ability, obviously we have it um, at the opening screen, either by your login you can choose your default language or from the home screen you can say what language you want to work from. So if I say for this time, okay, I want to connect in and I want to see all the screens in Finnish. So as soon as I do that, all the screens change into Finnish so we can log in. Now this part of the Mentun laan tota no, niin, ää, kytkeen tämä palvelu virtuun, eli silloin kun käyttäjä menee tänne virtuun kautta, niin tota, se tunnistaa käyttäjän tiedoista sen, että tota, millä kielellä oletuskielellä eli kyseinen käyttäjä kirjautuu. Okei. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, using single sign on, so oh. yeah. remember that. Okay, or you can use single sign on. So, if it's single sign-on, you will see the screen, and it'll pick up your username, and we can go through. So, what happens here is, I'm logged in as Temo, and he has access to a different view. So, you saw when I logged in as a previous user, they're a financial controller or somebody who looks after the department, and their interest is about the dashboard. Here I've got somebody who, their normal job, I want to connect in, and I want to raise requisitions. You might have somebody else who, when they connect in, they want to process invoices. So an individual user can choose what their default home screen is when they log in. Okay? And this is all available within their own control. So up here in the top, they can set up their personal profiles. So depending on what they want to see, you can say, okay, what's the home profile, what's the viewability? different modules, etc. So you can say, and again, I know these screens quite well, it's not that my finish has suddenly improved, I just happen to know where all the buttons are on the screens, and I thought at least we would do on this screen, I'll show it to you in Finnish and I can click through. The other ones I will switch back to English. So, these are the most recent purchases that uh, Timo has been doing. So it says, right, normally you buy laptop bags and you buy laptops. And again, we can actually have showing an icon of interest and you can click through, or we can have generic icons. We also support punch outs. Anybody who doesn't know what a punch out is, so let us say you were connecting to a stationary company website or a Dell website or something like that. So instead of loading the catalog onto the Softco system, you click on an icon here and that will then bring you to, let's say, the Dell website and you can look at the items on the Dell website. Put all the things into your cart, and then when you press finish, it push it pulls it back into the Softco system. Uh, so I can say, okay, I want to buy ten of these, so ten bags, and ten there. So we've option we've choices such as you can say uh, they can update the quantity. The price can be fixed, so you might say we have an agreed price for bags or for laptops or for paper or for this hotel or whatever it should be, in which case that field will be read-only. Or, as we have here, I can update the price. So maybe I've done something new on the contract or there's a special price for this month and I can change that price. And again, you can configure that down to an individual product. So if I say add that to the, my shopping cart, so up in the top right hand corner it says, okay, you've now started to create a requisition and you have one object in the cart. And you might say, that's fine, I'm happy to go there, or say, no, no, I want to add some more. So you say, add something else, and now we have two items in the cart. So within a requisition, you can have a requisition that I can have multiple items, and a requisition can also be for multiple vendors. So you can get one requisition approved, and then it will automatically, once it's approved, break that into the individual purchase orders and send those to the uh, vendors. Okay? So you can have it for all of the different items and it will automatically go out. We click on proceed. And then within here, and this is part of the part, the part where we're going to get into the workshops, these are the kind of screens that we'll work closely with the teams and say, okay, how should these be configured? And these can be configured for each of the different uh, companies and departments and say, these fields are mandatory, these fields are optional, and so on. But within the standard system, so I'll say uh, more laptops. Hurry. Okay, 
and you can see the fields that are mandatory automatically go red and the here it's saying okay you're buying it for uh, we call the company Carter so in Havinka and I want to get it delivered to the Finland now the other fields are optional so what's my delivery date or desired date and do I want to put in a comment to the supplier but because it's not in red it's an optional field so I could say okay that was done I say yes I want to pick it up and I want it to be delivered on the 1st of November and over here okay the laptop bags what cost center what department do I want these to get charged to again the field is red so I have to put it in because the fields are red and I haven't completed them you'll see that my save buttons I can't save it yet because I haven't filled in all the information and also I can't send it for approval because I haven't pressed save so this is going to stop you each time so if I say here I want to put it into marketing this one here I want to put it into marketing as well and now the buttons become enabled and I can press save and then I can route it on now within the routing what I've set up here is it automatically knows who I am and it knows who should verify this requisition and who should approve so we call these routing rules and you can have those rules based on the vendor it's going to or the cost center or GL code or equivalent combinations or if it's a one-off purchase you can say actually this person is allowed to pick from a list and they can pick this as the, ven the uh, verifier so somebody just to look at the requisition and make sure the content is correct and then it goes on to somebody else for approval to say yes I'm happy to allow you to spend that amount of money but for here we're going to send it on to Kersey and then to Marcos we choose OK and that's finished and it brings me back to my requisition so I know I was doing a lot of talking around that but you probably get the impression that takes less than a minute to go in to requisition something it's all very visual and very graphical it shows you the types of things you're trying to purchase it shows you if there's a required piece of information and maybe you have to fill it in also in the drop down list it'll say these are the ones that you can choose from so in the background all the jobs are running constantly and it says oh there's a new requisition which has been assigned to Kersey so it will then depending on the configuration offer three choices for Kersey to approve that so either from an email and I'll show you that in a moment uh, directly from the application so somebody could log in and uh, verify from within the application or from the mobile device so if I log in as Kersey I'm going to switch back into English. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> so over on the left-hand side, so requisitions to verify, and you can see Kersey has four at the moment to verify. So that's the new one that came through. So I can go from there. So we call this a card view. So quite often there will be enough information on this view to allow the person to approve and say oh yes I remember we had that discussion yesterday those are the laptops that Harry asked for that's okay in which case you can click directly there and approve or you say no actually I'm not happy with that and I can reject but rather than having to click into every single one of them you can uh, approve or reject from the outer screen your other option will be from the email so you see this email has just come into my email box here just now and we have the idea there so Kersey a new requisition so requisition 66 has been assigned and here's the details so from Dell we got items so we got bags we at 59 599 and up in the top corner this will be verify and reject and yes the email will be in Finnish but like I said my Finnish isn't quite good enough yet but the idea will be directly from there so either on your desktop or from your mobile phone it'll figure it out and you'll be able to reject or verify from that now each of these modes are optional you don't have to turn on email approval because somebody might say no we don't want email approval or we do want email approval so we can have it on or off equally mobile access can be on or off so you might say I want to give all three or just uh, email or just mobile or just from the UI and this is where just, I'll just before I connect it I'm going to make sure it actually connects in so give me a moment Okay. 
to work. So the mobile application, <coughs> we log in. A moment. So what you should be seeing is an equivalent of this type of view. So here, if you look in the middle, we've got four requisitions to approve. This is where I need three hands. So that's the equivalent of, you're looking at the equivalent of this screen here, but on the mobile device. I go into this particular one here. Okay. And we have all the different details, so requisition date, and we can say, okay, if I'm happy to verify from there, I can hit the, the blue button on it. Say so verify. Now, we used to have it that when you press verify, it automatically went. And people were saying, look, I'm a little bit fat fingered, so sometimes I make a mistake and I click on it before I should. So most customers ask us, can you just put in a confirm or submit button? So this is why then I press submit. And now it says OK. So just in case somebody's scrolling up and down and they go, oh, I didn't mean to either reject that or approve it or verify it. So it's just a two stage. On this screen, if I click the green button, that's it, it's done. But here on the mobile phone, people said, can we have a little bit of a, just an extra moment of pause to make sure it's right? Now, Kersey has verified that. Okay. Log out back to the home screen. Can we go back here? Now in a moment, because I verified, it's going to go on to Marcus. Now I'm not going to do anything in the system. The system is looking for these all the time, so it's automatically going, okay, who's the next person, who's the next person? So in a few moments I can either, and there we go, right on cue. So Marcus, now that Kersey has done that particular task, it's over to you. And Marcus can say, okay, I again, either log into the application and click on the button or do it from email. So if I say I want to approve from here. So this is the final stage. So that uh, requisition has now been approved. So Kersey approved it or verified it from the mobile device. Marcus did it from an email. And hopefully in about 20 or 30 seconds, because that's now been fully approved, the purchase order will go to the supplier. Again, the purchase order in this mode it will be sent as an email, but we can also put it onto what we call our supplier portal. I don't have that configured on this demo system, but you have a number of choices, a bit like on the approval. You can either go by mobile, by email, or directly from the application. The same when you're sending the purchase order, you can send it as a PDF, you can send it as a data file, or you can send a link to allow them to connect onto the supplier portal. They can go onto the portal and either press accept or say, actually, you've ordered 200 laptops. I've only got 100 in stock, so I'm going to confirm I can give you 100. Are you happy to receive the 100? Yes, we are. Okay, and then put the other 100 on back order. Okay. And again, right on cue. So, yep, so we have the purchase order. Again, the layout of the email, this is uh, generic, but it would be obviously in finish for yourselves. And I click on the attachment, and we have the details there. Again, the look and feel there is our standard look and feel. We'll work with yourselves to get it down. And if there are different logos, so it can be company-specific logos and different details uh, regarding the purchase order. So we can send it across as a PDF uh, or with an XML or an EDI file attached to it or ask somebody to connect onto the portal and download and confirm the purchase order. Okay, so far? So in the normal world then, so that's the requisition, the requisition is being raised, you might choose that you want to do receipting on the item, so we also have to allow somebody to go in and say yes, I've now received those laptops and within the software application they can do the receipting. So if I log into somebody who's going to do the receipting on it, we're doing receipting here? Again, Rob logs in. These are the normal items he purchases. And from a previous purchase order, now we've got purchase orders to receipt. You can go in. Again, same idea here. So we have this card view. I can do a receipt directly from here, or I can say I've done a partial receipt. So I'll say yes. 
I want to receive this. Are you happy that you're going to receive? So you can see the products. How many did you receive? Everything's okay. Receive that. And then, depending on how much information you want to put in on the receipt, we have here. So you can say, what date did it get delivered? Okay, it got delivered. To, I, I'm receiving it today, but actually it got delivered yesterday, or whatever it may be. So we say, okay, happy to receive that. Happy to receive that. Is it a bill of lading, a delivery number, and description? This was, say, the laptop bags. Or Harry. Harry's popular. And by default, it'll say, did you receive the full amount? And you can say, no, I only received five of them, or I received eight of them. And if in time you say, actually, I've received those ten, but we checked, and when we opened the box, two of them are broken, you can do returns as well. And you say, well, which ones are you returning? Well, out of the batch that I received on Tuesday, out of those ten, I want to return two of them. And it'll do the balance. It'll also mean that out of the ten you've ordered, you've only received eight. So if the invoice comes in for ten, it'll automatically stop the invoice because it'll only allow you to, to be invoiced up to the quantity that you've received. We say OK and save on that. Then that one goes off the list. So the receipting, and we have the same on the mobile receipting. You can go in because you might be out and you go, yeah, actually I've received those now. Type in the details and it's done. So you can either do the receipting uh, from the uh, client or from the mobile side. So when the invoice comes in, we know from, all, from the list and from the discussions with yourselves that one of the big things is that we are to automate as much as possible the processing of the invoice. So when the invoice comes in, it should be by exception only that it should go to somebody to approve. So if you've placed the order and the order has been approved and you've receipted the goods, when the invoice comes in, there should not be a need for a person to say, oh yes, I know everything about that, I can approve the invoice. So the idea would be if the invoice comes in, it will check against the purchase order, it will make sure it's for the right company, it's for the right currency, the unit price is correct, and it will validate that it's been received. And if all of those have been passed, then it will say, I don't need to send it to somebody again. But if, for example, you're not doing receipting, and you say, okay, I'm doing what's technically called a two-way match, yes, everything is okay, it matches off, but I don't know have you received it, then it will send an alert to somebody about the invoice. And the same idea that we saw about the email approval, you have a green and a red button, and you say, yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'll show you an example here of a, an invoice that we have fully processed. So under the different queues here, and under the ERP integration, we've got the different stages. The idea would be that we're going to send it off to the ERP, uh, let's say SAP or whatever it might be. It's waiting for 35 of them that have gone to SAP and it's waiting for a voucher number or document number back from uh, SAP. And then here are five that the system is sent off to ERP and it's received the uh, SAP document number or voucher number back. If I click into these. Now, this particular user has access to all the different departments or companies. You can also have it restricted based on a user, and I'll show you in a moment. So I've got five here. I'll log into someone different, look at the exact same queue, and I only see one of them. <coughs> so here, we can say, yep. So if I look along, and we say, I want to see this one for Dell. Of course. So you have a couple of choices there. Uh, we come across that all the time. We have a fruit, man or, no, don't say fruit manufacturer, a fruit distributor uh, that this happens to. They order the products, but it takes maybe six weeks or six months to get the products, but they actually receive the invoice the next day. So what we do is we have a, what we call a pre-match queue. So where the uh, purchase order uh, hasn't yet been received, it'll put it into a dedicated queue. 
Now for them, they say, okay, put it in that queue for seven days and then try to match. Okay, so that's one option. The other one is uh, from the portal, that you can actually submit the invoice from the portal and it'll only let you then do that once the goods have been received. So these are some of the things we'll go through on the workshop. So we have experienced a lot of practical problems with you know, sending out purchase orders, doing receipts, receiving invoices too early or for too much. And we try and flag them correctly, but not too early. So put in automatic delays. Don't try and match them if we know it's going to fail. Does that answer the question? Yeah? So in this example here, this one for Dell. So I've done some very simple coding here. Uh, or sorry, the system has based on the purchase order. So against the GL, we've assigned the VAT codes, the amounts, what cost center was assigned to. And if we look at the history of this particular one, okay, so I can click onto the history, and I have choices within here. I can see the complete history, I can see the routing history. So where did this go within the organization? Did it go to a person, or was it run by a background task? Or I want to see all the different values. You say, okay, well, who changed that value? What's it set to? If I look at the routing history here, okay. so when this one came in, just get it right on the screen there. So you see the ones here by Softco Jobs, Softco Jobs, Softco Jobs. So all of these are background jobs. So the invoice was received automatically. It went into the queue. It was matched automatically. So all of these stages here were all automatic. Now in this configuration, we've chosen to put in a person as the final stopgap to make sure that everything was okay. And this is an optional step. You might say, no, no, we want it to flow through completely. If it comes in, it matches to the purchase order, it has a receipt, everything is okay, then send it straight onto the ERP. Now that can be a bit nervous for customers sometimes, and they go, that's a little bit too much automation. And for many customers, we say, okay, we'll put in a finance person as the final check, and then they go, okay, let me do that for about three months, and then when I'm comfortable, the system is getting it right every single time, uh, remove that. If you say, yeah, I know everything is okay, then automatically send it off to the ERP system. But the idea here is that the invoice was submitted, and only at the very last stage did Elaine say, yep, yeah, I'm going to check that invoice. But she didn't have to change anything. It's just a visual inspection. Everything looks okay on the invoice. It looks like it's coded correctly, and then send it over to, in this case, uh, SAP. And then what happened from the SAP side is SAP replied back with the voucher number here. Now, it hasn't yet been paid, but when it is paid, we'll also get the payment reference and the payment date on it. So this allows you to look from both sides. So you might be in the ERP, let's say, for example, SAP, and you go, fine, do your search, either, say, in FI or MIRO, whatever it may be, look at the record, and then we can put a, a link within SAP to allow you to see the document stored in the Softco side, or you can say, well, I have my SAP reference, and I want to search on that particular one, and it will find the invoice that was posted against that record in SAP. Or you say, well, I have a payment reference, and so search within the Softco system. So the idea is, if, you, if the finance person or somebody does have a query uh, by a supplier or a vendor, they can either go in and look at the ERP, or they can go in and look in the Softco side. So we don't mind which side the answer is to, to get the... Uh, the question resolved for the vendor. So in that particular view, I was logged in as somebody who had access to all the organizations. And then the last part, I'll just show you about the restrictions on security. So if I log in as Emma, who has already access to one of the organizations, Remember when I logged in a moment ago, that said five, but here Emma has only got access to the U.S. organization there, so she can see that. So she can't see the ones for the Finnish organization or for the Irish organization or the U.K. And that's just basic. Everything else looks the same. She can uh, access the different jobs, so you can restrict users down to what they can see and what they can do. Questions? So, are we planning to send? Yeah. 
Are we sending PO data back to SAP? From the purchase order. Once you get invoice, yes, but from the purchase order, no, we're not sending the data to SAP. Since I got warmed up, okay. another question, um, which I just forgot. <laughs> Damn, blackout. I will ask it when I come back. Come back. Has anyone else questions? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, from uh, State Treasury. Uh, can you tell more about, if I have understood right, so you have also invoicing portal, portal there. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean uh, you, uh, with that system, uh, it's possible for those companies who hasn't uh, their own invoicing, uh, e-invoicing system. So it's possible to uh, send e-invoices to us with us. That system is it possible? Okay. Well, I don't follow the question. Is it that that you can? Uh, is it able to uh, make your, uh, your invoice? Oh, do a PO flip? Yeah. Do a PO flip? No, no, do invoice actually. Invoice. Yeah, yeah, but a PO yeah, flip becomes. That, that was the question. Okay, okay. So, right, yeah. So, from the supplier portal. Yes. Um, you'll be able to. Sorry, no, you, <laughs> your suppliers will be able to submit an invoice. Um, so, uh, a data file. So, the fin in for the XML file. PDF, or to do what we call a PO flip. So do you understand what a PO flip is? So you can take a purchase order and say create invoice, and it'll take the details of the purchase order and make an invoice from it automatically. Uh, but it means that you, you have to make order uh, via uh, that uh, system. If you are... Yes, you, yes, yes. The order would need to be created by... Always. Yes. yes. Uh, can you tell about the experiences? What kind of experiences do you have uh, from uh, other countries, uh, from other country uh, companies which have been using that? On the, the portal? Feature? Yeah. Yeah. So normally it's a, a slow start. So what happens is they pick some, if I can use the phrase, some friendly vendors because they don't always want to start with everybody. So they've got either some big vendors where they know they're technically capable and they do a trial with those until they say, yes, okay, it's all working, rather than opening it up to everybody. So normally you'll pick, say, two or three vendors, make sure everything is okay. They use the portal to receive purchase orders first and then submit invoices. And then once any of the uh, bugs have been ironed out and they say, yeah, that's all working exactly how we would expect it to work, then you open it to a broader and broader range. More questions? Okay. <laughs> it's maybe connected to the earlier question. Uh, so, if I want to buy some one-off expert service, for mm -hmm. example, and it's not in the web shop, yep. then what do I do? Ah, now, this is where I have a challenge, because I can tell you what we can technically do, but 
it's whether or not we're supposed to do it, we have to decide that in the workshops, right? So one-off vendors and one-off purchases? There will be Okay, so we're going to enable the free purchase? We are okay, so. Going to be so we need to. Yeah, every now and again it's like, okay, I know what the system can do, but am I allowed configurers? Uh, so, yes, we allow, we call them one time vendors and one time purchase. Uh, so, yes, we can do that within the system. I have a question. Um, I have understood uh, stood that you have a solution for uh, contract management to. Uh, it's true. Is and right? could you say some words about it? Harry, do you want to? Okay. I speak Finnish. <laughs> <laughs> Eli muutama sana sopimuskohdistuksesta. Eli sopimus voidaan tuoda järjestämään ulkoisesta lähteestä tai se voidaan my myös käsitellä. Sopimushallinnasta ei sopimuskohdistuksesta. Sopimushallinnasta. Eli sopi, sopimus voi, voidaan tuoda ulkoisesta lähteestä tai luoda täällä järjestämässä, ää, niin kuin sanotaan, tyhjä, tyhjästä lähtien. Se voidaan kierrättää täällä, viedä arkistoon, arkistosta saada sitten hälytys, että sopimuksen voimassaoloaika on päättymässä, lähettää uudestaan kierrolle ja siitä tulla sopimuksen uusi revisio. Eli sä voit sitä sopimusta ää, uudistaa sen vaikkapa ajan päättymisen perusteella. Ja nähdä, kuka hyväksyi sen sopi sopimuksen, onko tämä sopimus meidän mentävä tämmöiden liiketoimintaprosessin läpi, asiatarkastus, hyväksyntä, voiko se olla tämmöitä, jos se kohdistuu tämmöisiin palveluihin, mitä sen toimenpiteet vaatii sen sopimuksen hallinnan osalta. Se voidaan myös sitten, mitä Roopikin nä Robertti näytti tuossa, Julkaista, julkaista dashboardissa toimittajan sopi, sopimukset per joku, niin näyttää tuolla työpöydällä. Mikä on päättymässä olevat so, sopimukset, joiden arvo on tätä luokkaa? Ja kaikkia tämmöisiä hälytyksiä saada myös sen dashboardin näkymään. Eli kaikki, mitä on siellä järjestelmässä, voidaan nostaa näkyviin sen dashboardille. Selventiinkö tästä kysymystä? Joo, kiitos. kiitos. Työstäminen, siellä se toimittaa portaalin kautta sen sopimuksen. Niin Joo, jo, so, sorry. Eli kuten tuossa, tossa, niin toimittajaportaali ei vaan käsittele mitään tilauksia, laskuja. Sinne voidaan laittaa vaikkapa tuo sopimus ja kysyä toimittajalta muutoksia siihen sopimukseen, keskustelu siitä sopimuksen siitä sisällöstä, se auditoituu sinne aina. Ja sitten kun se sopimus viedään arkisto, niin se käyty keskustelu säilyy kanssa sen sopimuksen liitteenä. Um, I, I have a question uh, regarding the, uh, the contract management. Is the contract, when you create the, the contract, is it uh, structured or is it PDF, so is it is the Word document or PDF document or is it structured information? Uh, but contract, uh, I, I speak to Phoenix. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sopimusdokumentti. Järjestelmä on binäri yhteensopiva. Se voi olla PDF, se voi olla Word-dokumentti, se voi olla niin sanotusti mitä, mitä tahtoo. Ja sillä on tietyt metatiedot. Osa niistä metatiedosta voidaan lukea, vaikkapa jos teillä olisi PDF A3, niin siellähän on metatiedot mukana se. Ja automaattisesti täyttää ne metatiedot sen perusteella, sen sopimusdokumentikin perusteella sitten. Ei, mutta Harrille, Harrille tuota, tiedoksi, sä olet varmaan tietoinen siitä, että vuoteen 2020 mennessä meillä on aika vaativat tavoitteet hallitusohjelmaa myöten. Olen se erinomainen asia. Ja tuota, se tarkoittaa sitä, että meillä on tilauksellisia sopimuksellisia laskuja tietty määrä ja, ja tuota, niiden täsmä, automaattinen täsmäytymisaste pitäisi olla lähemmäksi 90 prosenttia. 
Ja samanaikaisesti kun ottaa huomioon, että, että meillä on käyttöönotot pääsääntöisesti ensi vuoden aikana ja 2020 tulee ää, aika pian. Niin tämmöisenä toiveena ehkä ja kommenttina, ja voit välittää tota, näille, näille irlantilaisille kollegoillekin, että et, et, me olemme näiden suhteen tosissaan, meidän pitää saavuttaa ne, ja missään nimessä me en tässä vaiheessa epäile. Toivon on projektille kaikkea, kaikkea hyvää, mutta tuota, samalla haluaisin muistaa, että resurssoikaa se oikein niin, että te olette oikeasti myötävaikuttamassa siihen, että me saavutamme ne lopputulokset. Te olette osa sitä, ja sillä tavalla teidän tuota, onnistumista mitataan. Hieno juttu. Me tuota, palaamme vuosittain, että itse, että missä mennään. Kiitos. Sopimushallinnasta vielä kysymys, että saadaanko siitä sitten sähköinen allekirjoitus myös sieltä toimittajan suunnasta? Kyllä. Okay. Hei, Minna Elias Ilmatieteen laitokselta, niin mua kiinnostaa toimittajan perustaminen, joka on niin kuin aika hankalaa tänä päivänä. Että tuleeko siihen jotain helpotusta? No siis, tota, se malli, mitä me ollaan tota, noin speksattu tästä etukäteen niin kuin yhdessä silloin, osa teistä oli sitä speksaamassa, niin on se, että silloin kun tota, no, niin me ollaan tekemässä, tai tunnistetaan, että me tarvitaan, me tehdään, okei, meillä on hankintasopimus varmaan tehty se toimittajan kanssa, toivon mukaan pääsääntöisesti, ei mennä suoraan hankintojen kautta, mutta kun meille tulee uusi toimittaja, ja kun me, me tehdään jo sitten sitä telausheitystä siinä vaiheessa, niin silloin lähtee impulssi suoraan täältä järjestelmätyökalusta, niin kuin GQ, uuden toimittajan perustamiseksi, eli se menee sähköisesti sanoma. Eli ei, että tehdään se siinä vaiheessa, kun ollaan jo tekemässä ensimmäistä tilaa, Lausta tai ostoa sieltä kyseiseltä uudelta toimittajalta. Eikö siinä vaiheessa se, sano, se toimittajan perustamissanoma lähtee täältä, tota noin, niin, ää, meneekin joku. Eli ei tehdä, että muutetaan se prosessi niin kuin siinä vaiheessa, että, siellä, että se tehdään siellä heti siellä alussa, eikä niin kuin tänä päivänä, että nyt tulee sitten lasku ja sitten huomataan, että tämä toimittaja puuttuu, ettei pysty käsittelemään. Sitten lähdetään jollain lomakkeella ja blanketilla tilaamaan sitä palkeiden kautta toteutettavaksi, josta sitten jossain vaiheessa ui kieku, jonka jälkeen päästään sitten taas saadaan se toimittaa siirrettyä kiekusta, kiekusta nykyisin rannoin ja sitten saadaan siellä lasku käsiteltyä. Eli tehdään siinä vaiheessa heti kuusi toimittajaa, tehdään niin sitten lähtee myöskin se pyyntö sitten niin kuin kiekun toimittajarekisteri. Ja tässähän tämä varmaan menee näin, miten Kati, Kati kertoi niin aluksi, mutta sitten se iso kuvahan nyt meillä on sitten se, että me saadaan tähän koko Tota, kilpailutus- ja laskujen käsittelytilaamisprosessiin se sama toimittajatietopalvelu. Ja nyt meillä on Temmin kanssa käyty sitä neuvottelua, että me ilman uudistaminen kytkettäisiin siihen, että meille tulisi koko julkiseen hallintoon käytännössä tavallaan se hankintailmoituskanava. Ja siinä samassa yhteydessä meillä on sitten se tavallaan se toimittajatieto ja toimittajarekisteri. Ja siihen pystyttäisiin kytkemään nyt nämä, mistä Timo kertoo myöhemmin tänään. Eli nämä automaattiset tarkastukset, mitkä on kytketty niin kuin nyt kilpailutusratkaisuun, niin nämä tietojen tarkastukset, niin niitähän tarvitaan myös niin kuin muussa vaiheessa, ei pelkästään siinä niin kuin kilpailutusvaiheessa, vaan, vaan että jos siinä niin kuin yrityksen statuksessa tapahtuu muutoksia myöhemminkin, niin kyllä se tieto pitäisi olla käytössä. Eli tämä on se iso kuva, mitä halutaan tehdä, että se ei välttämättä niin kuin ole ensi vuonna tai Ehkä on jo 2019 tai 2020 olemassa ja siinähän meillä on rah niin kuin rahoitusta olemassa. Sitten toinen, mikä kommentti tuli tähän sopimushallinnan tekemiseen, niin nythän me tehtiin tämä hankinta sillä tavalla, että, että se mitä tarvitaan tämän niin kuin laskujen automaattisen käsittelyn osalta, niin se tehdään ja se on niin kuin suunniteltu toteuttavaksi. Nyt me ikään kuin saatiin <köhö> niin kuin tämmöinen niin kuin väline ja palvelu tai ratkaisu, mikä kykenee paljon monipuolisempaan sopimushallintaan ja itse asiassa sitä kautta myös toimittajahallintaan, joka tarkoittaa nyt sitä, että meidän pitää se suunnitella uudestaan, että miten se nyt saataisiin toteutettua sillä tavalla järkevästi, että se on meillä käytössä. Eli sitä ei nyt tässä projektissa ole vielä suunniteltu, mutta nyt kun se on mahdollista, niin meidän pitää nyt suunnitella se, että miten se on niin kuin fiksua ottaa 
käyttöön tämä sopimushallinta. Ja siinä meillä oli viime viikon ohjausryhmässä siitä keskustelua, että just vero, verohallinto ja ainakin maanmittauslaitos niin oli kiinnostuneita jo siitä niin lähteä miettimään sitä yhdessä, että varmaan tässä pitäisi ottaa muutamia virastoja, ketkä niin oikeasti tekee tämmöistä niin sopimushallintaa, olisi sille tarvetta ja miettiä, että miten se toteutettaisiin sitten. Ja sillä se ei ole siis niin ylimääräisesti hinnoiteltu palvelu, vaan se kuuluu tähän perus, perushankinnan kustannuksiin. Tulee kertatoimittajan mahdollisuus myös. Vieläkö on kysymyksiä? Okei. Okay. Onko vielä? Okay. If not, okay. everyone are satisfied. <laughs> Yes, maybe. Yeah, okay. Questions at the coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Um, time check? Yes. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay, so project approach. So how do we um, go about managing this project? So we have we have a standard project delivery methodology that we follow, which um, follows these phases all the way from planning through testing, go live, and, and support. So we will be working very closely with the uh, Palquette team and all you guys to, to fit our methodology, because our methodology is our methodology, but you guys will have your methodology as well. So we need to make sure that those both fit. Uh, and like I said, it's very important that we work closely together on that. Um, in terms of our teams, so we will bring uh, a lot of resources from different disciplines, so people like Harry from the product side, people like Robert from the kind of project management side, uh, and also all our kind of consultants, software people, training people, support people, and we will bring all of those key people at the different stages of the project to join your team. And we will create one single team with, with, uh, with all those people. Part of that whole delivery process and the key to all of these projects which is starting today, this is part of the process, is communication. So communication is absolutely critical for us. And what we have found works best is the more open we are with customers and, and as we're going through projects, the better the projects go. Um, so we, what we do is when we're, when we're um, sharing tasks and we're setting responsibilities for, for the project team, whether they're our responsibilities or your responsibilities, we share those openly. We use a tool called Asana. Um, some of you may have seen it or used it before. It is an excellent tool for open um, um, dialogue and open, open communication. So we will manage the initial phases of this project uh, using this tool. So we actually have a, you can see at the top there, it says uh, template implementation. So the first phase of this project is working on building uh, the template with Palquette for the initial pilot customers. And we will work through a project, uh, a micro project if you like for that. And then each time we engage with each of the different customers, each of your teams, uh, we will open independent customers for those, or independent projects for those. And the, the, uh, the, the representatives that you guys have for those projects will be added to the teams and they will have full visibility of all the activities that happen, all the statuses of where those activities are, who's responsible for delivering them, when they're due to be delivered, um, and that makes sure that everybody is completely aware of where we are on the project. Um, just to give you an example of, uh, of the approach and, and uh, you know, a very successful project that we have delivered, and I think it has a lot of similarities with um, the project we're delivering here is with a customer of ours called Primark. Um, Primark is uh, an extremely large, uh, um, they're basically a discount um, fashion outlet. Uh, they're not yet here in Finland, but they will be here shortly. They are. Uh, they have over 400 stores in 17 different countries, so they're a big, big organization. They have a global shared services center where they implemented our solution. Um, over 6 billion in revenues, 70,000 employees. And just with the nature of their project, we had lots of different languages, currencies, taxation rules in each of the different jurisdictions that we have to operate. And their volumes are about 
five, six hundred thousand um, invoices per year split between we, GFR is goods for resale. So this is everything that they buy and then sell in their stores. Uh, and then goods not for resale, which is all of their kind of operational costs. Every purchase that happens within Primark goes through our system. So they're probably, they have as much complexity as you guys do. Their volumes are about half of what your volumes are. Um, but they had very similar requirements from the outset, which is we want to put in a global shared services center. Um, we want to implement a standard template, and we want to be able to roll it out quickly, which are the same kind of initiatives and, and requirements that we have here. So our approach right from the start there was to create a global template for all of their requirements in all of their stores, in all of their jurisdictions that they were operating in. So they went through a similar process of what do we need? We got a very long list of requirements and we went through a process of building a global template with them. So that was standardized functionality uh, across all the different um, locations, processes, user experience. Uh, they had a lot of different integrations um, in, in the different uh, in the different jurisdictions, so much like we have here as we go through the different departments, we have different integration requirements, and we put all of that into a standard configuration. And once we had that, we were then able to implement it, like here, in an initial pilot number of customers, and then we went through a, they open new stores, I mean, I think it's even less than every six to eight weeks now. Every four to six weeks, they are opening a new store. So they have massive, massive growth. Last year was a, was a, a real milestone for them. They entered the US market, which brought a lot of new challenges in terms of uh, jurisdiction, um, uh, tax codes, currencies, all those type of uh, challenges. And we were able to uh, implement our, or extend our solution to support that market in less than a month. And they've now, I don't know, they've got uh, 12, 15 uh, stores now in, in the U.S. market. And they, as part of that whole process, they were able to bring all the different jurisdictions onto one governance model. So everybody now follows a central shared service governance model in terms of how they do business, how they do the procurement, how they do approvals, how they do um, payments. This is the same approach that we intend to operate here. So we will be going through this um, with, uh, with you guys over the next period of time. So this is just to give you a high level. We're at the very early stages of this to give you a high level view of the timelines. So we start this at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Um, and we will be starting workshops on building that template definition uh, based on your requirements. So we will go through, over the next two or three months, we will go through a process of uh, defining exactly what that template looks like, exactly what those functionalities are. Um, once we have that in Q1 next year, the target is to uh, implement that and roll it out to the initial four pilot customers, which you can see listed at the bottom there. Um, so by middle of next year, we will be live with those customers. And then after that, it's a rollout to each of the different um, departments uh, across the Finnish government. So what does that mean for you guys? Well. Um, although we're talking about middle of next year, we've already talked about this directly. It's important that we engage, so today is part of it, that we engage with you guys early. We need to focus on the initial four pilot customers, but we also need to get you guys thinking about um, you know, what your inputs into these process are going to be. You know, we're going to need feedback on integrations. We're going to need your input on, on some of the functionalities that we're including in the template. So it's important that we engage with you early in that process. Um, once we get to the point of... Uh, being ready to go to the implementation process with you, what does that look like? Um, we will do initial workshops with you, so at that point we will have our template, which will meet, let's say, 80% or 90% of your requirements, but we then need to meet with each of the departments and understand what specific options they require, what specific integrations they need. Um, so there will be demands on you to have the, um, the relevant teams in place, the, re the relevant representatives available for those projects. And we will put together a project plan, timelines, implementation, training schedules, and then when do we actually go live. Um, and then one thing that we recommend, obviously, is every time we go live, that we have some level of support when you go live before we hand it over to general support. So we typically do some sort of hyper care support as part of that process. 
once we are live, um, and this is again something that we've we discussed a lot with the team um, as part of this process, is that it's not just important that we deliver this project for these requirements for the, the scope that we're talking about. We're already starting to talk about extended scope with the contract management and, and things like that. It's important for us that we continue to collaborate very closely and continue to feed into our roadmap, which then feeds into the solutions that you guys operate. So we do that as a standard practice, um, particularly with key customers and key markets, which you guys obviously will be. Um, we also bring to that all the experience that we have with our other customers globally. So, you know, while things in Finland are done in a Finnish way, there are a lot of similarities and there are a lot of best practices and a lot of experiences that we have from lots of different markets and lots of different industries that we can bring to this project as well. So that's an important as, as part of that process. Um, we, we have a, a general um, wish list uh, um, feature wish list process whereby anybody who's a user of the product can send in uh, ideas or requests into the process. We don't uh, promise or commit to implement all of those, but we do consider them all. They're a key part of Harry's uh, input into his roadmap and design decisions. Um, and you'd be surprised how many of those ideas get incorporated. So if we find something that's a good idea, we feel that it's a generic idea that applies to other customers in the market and potentially other customers globally, we absolutely include those in, in the roadmap on our side. Um, and then one thing that we will be doing here is, is we will be having, we actually have an annual user conference. We will probably do something locally here in Finland, given the size of the project. Um, and again, that will be something like this, where we have had some experience uh, using the system. You've had some ideas and it gets an opportunity for everybody to get together and discuss thoughts and uh, input into the process. In summary, um, how do we look at this? What are our key kind of success criteria for this project? Uh, first part is we must establish a single team. So we have, I think we know who the members are of that for the initial start, but you guys will all become part of that as we go through the rollout. Uh, our first goal is to uh, define and deliver uh, the standard template, which will apply to all the uh, other customers as we roll out. Once we have that uh, defined and built, we will then roll it out to the initial four customers for the pilot uh, program, and then it's a project of rolling it out to all the other departments throughout the Finnish government. Um, we then will provide local Finnish support for that, so that's a, a, key, uh, a key requirement here, and obviously that's a, a focus for us to deliver, and then we collaborate on, on future roadmap uh, activities and future roadmap development. So, that's everything from a high-level software introduction. Any questions on that, or do you want to leave questions for the end? I'm just a little bit conscious about time. Okay, they're all there. Oh, there you oh, go. Okay. Um, maybe this is something to Kati later on, but the... Um, 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 I think the... Uh, would be important to have... Um, uh, for the pilot project as well, the, uh, the internal service centers, uh, uh, serv services and, and from the CBP as well, the other products in, in the catalog before they start uh, piloting. So uh, what is Softco's uh, experience and what is our plan? On, on, on doing this, because uh, uh, I think there would be a, a chicken and, and an egg problem. Um, if it's empty, the system, then uh, there is nothing to order and uh, no reason to use. So how do we plan to tackle this one? Uh, we are starting with the frame agreement for the startup, and, uh, and then we are also including some other suppliers already at the first phase, and those other suppliers are um, chosen by who, by the pilot organizations, uh, because because pilots are the first one to start, so we then start with those suppliers who are necessary, are the most important ones for the pilot unit, and then we continue with the other suppliers uh, based on the implementation, implementation of rollout timetables. Time but at first we start with certain 
frame agreement suppliers. Those are already chosen by you guys, actually. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things as well, as I mentioned earlier, we will be focusing on the initial four departments to start, but that's something that everybody can start thinking about now, um, you know, before we actually start doing the rollout. If I have understood right, so you are using supply of portal, and and uh, maybe in the future we will uh, transmit those messages uh, in so-called uh, four corner model. Is it possible in this solution? In, if you understood right, model? yes. For a four corner model, I mean uh, now we have that. Uh, uh, model uh, when we are transmitting e invoices so so uh, in the future maybe also those procurement uh, messages uh, could use the same for the purchase order. system yeah so the so the pur pur our purchase order messages going out to the suppliers Yes, so, so we do all that we do that through the portal already, but if we have direct integrations with certain suppliers we can do um, direct exactly do outbound order messages as well, yeah. And I think that in this new implementation we will do we actually use all options. Maybe no more questions. Thank you. Thank you a lot.